to another episode of Faith Greater Than Fear. I'm Mike Schrage, and I get to serve here as president with GMPI Good News Productions International in Joplin, Missouri. And we are running well over probably 70 episodes since the middle of March when we all experienced COVID and lockdown. And what we've been doing as a goal in these programs is to encourage people that we highlight as people of faith and see how they can encourage the rest of us on this journey here in 2020 and be more encouraged and be people of encouragement to others. And so today it's a real honor. Uh, we've had a long relationship to introduce to you my next guest and that is Jessica Sherman. Jessica, welcome. Thank you very much. So you look like you're in a special place. Tell the audience about a little bit about yourself and where do we find you on this fine afternoon? Yeah, so I am currently employed as a professor at Ozark Christian College, and right now I'm sitting in my office. Um, I tried to give you one of the more interesting walls in my office because, um, uh, to, to be honest, um, where my office or where my desk is usually situated, you would have had to look at a really boring uh, bulletin board and some hanging file folders that aren't very attractive. So <laughs> um, I've got you looking at my wall of books because I teach um, our literature and composition courses. And so of course it kind of comes with the territory. I love books, um, I love words. And so, so yeah, I thought this would be a really fun back drop for our conversation today. Um, one of my other responsibilities though here at Ozark is I get to run the Academic Resource Commons, which is the peer tutoring center for our students. And so I hire upperclassmen to function as peer tutors that work with our students who just need um, academic support. So they come in with questions about homework and papers and tests. And I have tutors that, that help assist them through you know, their own academic journey. Um, so that's kind of what I do, you know, eight to five every day. Um, but then I'm also a wife and a mom. i um, been married to Ryan for 22 years now. And then I've been a mom to Josh for just a little over 18 years. And he is now a freshman in college as well. So, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. So we are located in Joplin. You're not that far away. You work literally within 400, 500 feet or meters of us. So uh, it's funny we got to do this over Zoom in our season this year. But tell us a little bit first on the personal side, how it is to be a mom who releases a son off to university this year as a freshman. How's that going? How are you feeling? How is he processing? And how are you and Ryan, your husband? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. We, um, we found out that we were pregnant with Josh a month after September 11th. So, um, you know, these, these are the kids, not, not just my own son, but this generation of freshmen were born in the shadow of those two towers that fell. And so um, this is a remarkable generation to begin with, that they were born in an era that has seen so much change. Um, so yeah, we, we um, have raised him in a very, a very strange time to begin with, right? Um, and then obviously there was no way that we could have foreseen that you know, his senior year would get cut short the way it did. You know, he uh, went on spring break thinking that it would just be a, a weird kind of extended spring break, but that he would go back, um, you know, after spring break, like we all, we all thought we would come back to school <laughs> after a weird little extended spring break and then that didn't happen. Um, and then he finished his senior year online. And then knowing what I knew over the summer about how this school year was probably gonna look or at least the general shape of it, yeah, it's just been so strange to then send him off to university without um, some of the same experiences, knowing that he's gonna miss out on some of those same experiences that were part of my college you know, experience. Um, and that's been a little heartbreaking for me, you know, uh, to, to know that he is missing out on some of those things, uh, to feel sad for him, um, to also feel a little nervous, a little scared um, at times, um, but to also 
still have like mustering up some hope for him too, because I think that there is the potential for this generation to be really resilient. Um, goodness, to think that if they can, you know, be born post 9-11 and live through things like this, there is the whole, there is a whole lot of potential for this generation to be super resilient. Um, so there's a lot of hope for him thinking that if he can make it through some really tough times like this, um, with the help and the encouragement of the church body and the Holy Spirit that, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not super despondent about you know, his odds and his future. Um, but yeah, it's just, a whole, it's a mix. Goodness, there's, um, there's just such a mix of emotions this fall sending him off um, that I didn't anticipate, you know, just because the, the lead up to it was just so very different. Um, although he's my first and my only. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that I had a whole lot of, I didn't have any experience. You know, I didn't know what to expect going into it this August. <laughs> well, thank you, Jessica. First thing, you look like a very young mother of a freshman. <laughs> you look like you'd be in school yourself. Um, <laughs> but uh, secondly, that's a great point. You know, I hadn't made that connection that there's this being the generation post 9-11 and we all can probably draw on our conscience exactly where we were when mm -hmm. that happened that morning uh for me older it's the same kind of thing as when jfk was assassinated i know exactly where i was in the eighth grade and what room and what was happening that afternoon and so they missed the scar of the initial onset, but they've lived with the long effects of that through their life. And I love the word you used, resilient. Kinnaman, uh, David Kinnaman, in, uh, head of Barna Research, you may have read the book, talks about raising in this Gen Z, a resilient faith generation. So what are you seeing in you and as a parent and in your son's journey how are you instilling or what things are unique to give them that hope to be that resilient generation that you talked about? Um, one of the things that my husband and I have been fairly intentional about is just is talking through stuff with him. Um, is trying to prepare him for things and not necessarily giving him the answers to everything, um, but just trying to like give him a heads up like, hey, when you encounter this, um, you might feel this way and that's okay. Um, or even to try to let him know that he's going to encounter certain obstacles, that, that it's not going to be a rose petal strewn path, <laughs> that it's okay to encounter difficulties and here are the challenges that you might face and that's normal. So one of the things that we've just tried to do all along the way with him is just have conversations about those things, hoping that the, that the discussion about what he's going to face will help him know that, okay, these, these emotions that I'm having, they're okay, they're normal, so that he doesn't just shut down um, or freak out, you know, thinking that I'm the only person who's ever experienced this. Um, but two, that it's completely okay to encounter obstacles and difficulties. And hopefully the conversations that we've had about them will prepare him enough to keep on working through them. And again, not just sit down and give up and think, well, because it wasn't easy, you know, I must have done something wrong. So now I'm not just, I'm just not gonna do anything. Um, so yeah, I, I think um, that the conversation aspect, I know there's been a whole lot of other stuff we've done just by happenstance and we looked at each other and went, oh, well, that was kind of cool that that worked out that way. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was just pure dumb luck on our part. But the conversation thing has been probably for us one of the, one of the consistent things in our parenting that we've tried to talk to him about. And again, not to give him answers, but just to prep him for what, what he might see um, as he continues growing up. I had a person the other day highlight the 339 questions Jesus asked. Hmm. And uh, of course, some of them are repeated in different nuancing in the four gospels. But what you're saying, Jessica, is, is, hey, friends, ask the questions, probe into your child's life. They may, particularly for us young guys or males, we just give the grunt reply. Mm, how is it? Mm, one word replies, well, keep going, keep digging, keep drilling, keep 
probing and getting at it because it, it'll be good for you as parents to know where they're at. But then secondly, it's good for them to process, right? So yeah. then, you know, Jesus, Peter, Paul, James, they all tell us that as people of faith, you, me, your son, our spouses and those listening, it is not promised to be an easy path. And you describe what we kind of hope it would be, but it's not that way. And this generation is really going to experience it. So tell me from your being the mom to now put the academic teacher professorial attitude on, how do you help a group that, as you were telling us before the program, six feet away, masks, can't even see their face, or you opt for Zoom because then you can at least see them but then you can't touch or connect as a group. What are you doing as a teacher? What are you doing to cope as you get into more months of this in the, in the classroom? Yeah, um, man, it's been like, there's a lot of like self-talk, <laughs> you know? Honestly, there's a whole lot of like, kind of talking to myself on a daily basis, like, okay, Jessica, here we go. Um, you know, talking to God a lot about it too. Um, journaling for me has always been a thing because there's um, there's a whole lot of this that the longer this goes on, you know, you can't just put a smile on and pretend like, okay, it's fine, everything's okay, um, you know, and muscle your way through it. Um, we're, we're enough months into this, into this that, yeah, just grin and bear it isn't gonna, isn't gonna do it. Um, so for me, there's a fair amount of my own daily or weekly practices that, yeah, I'm, I'm relying on more and more just, yeah, because this is hard, right? Um, <laughs> like, and it's, it's not getting any easier and it's not getting any better. Um, but for my students, yeah, it's trying to encourage them to find their own practices. Like what, what are they doing on a regular basis? That's not just escapism, right? That's not just, um, plugging into Netflix, you know, and watching 13 episodes of whatever, and hoping that at the end of it, everything's hunky-dory and fixed. Um, and it's kind of a little bit up about what I do with my son, too. It's like, okay, like, let's actually acknowledge how we feel. That's, that's an okay thing. You know, God doesn't ask us to be robots. Um, he doesn't ask us to disengage from our emotions. Let's go ahead and acknowledge our emotions, but then let's take them to him because he is the only one who can help us rightly um, deal with them and process them. You know, we're not going to wallow in them, but we're not going to ignore them either. Let's take them to the father. Let's take them to his throne. Um, let's let him be the one to actually um, work through them to help us understand where are they coming from? You know, are there deeper things inside us that these emotions are actually revealing? So I talk with some of the students that I have a closer relationship with about those kinds of things because yeah, digging through that stuff that that's not standing at my lectern, you know, <laughs> that's not the stuff I go, you know, go through in my classrooms, but um, those students that I do have a closer relationship with, it's trying to help them, like, are you, are you really burned out? Are you really weary? Okay, like, let's, yeah, let's talk about that. And then let's take it to Jesus, because he's the only one who's actually going to be able to help you work through that. And if it means that on the you know, on the other side of this, you need to actually go see a counselor or something because that it reveals some really deep, heavy wounds, then, then that's okay. Let's go do that together. You know, let's let you get connected with someone who can do that. But then with my students in my classrooms, it's just helping them kind of like we talked about, it's that resilience word, you know, it's that let's keep on going. Yes, this is hard, but life is hard and, and let's develop some skills now. And I work mostly with freshmen, mostly with the 18 and the 19 year olds. So let's start now at the very beginning of your career here in college to develop some skills that will help see you through not only the next three or four years of school, but through the next, you know, your 20s, you know, your 30s. That if you can build some skills now, to help with that grit, with that perseverance, 
to see you through some other more difficult, more complicated, um, more challenging things than just whether or not you wanted to do your homework um, or whether or not you got a bad grade on your test, those kinds of things. Yeah, that's good. So talk about it, process it, go to the father. He created a heart, our body and our brain and emotions. Mm -hmm. And so he's got this and kind of like they get to go through a, an accelerated boot camp you know, <laughs> of life. Uh, and there's losses in that, you know, in boot camp, there's a loss of weight, there's a loss of identity and self, there's a loss of family affinity. Uh, and you're going into an unknown charted path. And uh, you're described for your son, a loss of just closure on high school before they got to college. Now as freshmen, there's losses because all of this community building that creates things over the next three and four years has been adjusted radically. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated what you said about, you know, if this needs to be really a heavy thing to talk about, man, there is no shame. Please mm -hmm. talk to the father, talk to your parents, talk to your counselor, your, in your case, teacher. Uh, talk to someone else who is qualified uh, to do it to a deeper level to help it get finished. So as a mom of a freshman teaching freshman, which by the way, he's not in your class. <laughs> he's in a different school for our yes. audience to know. Uh, what would you say in closing minutes here as a mom, as a professor, uh, particularly of college age, that's where your life is right now. What would you encourage moms and dads of those aged children? Hey, do this? Um, one of the things that I think was really helpful a couple weeks ago, I wrote about this on my blog um, and had several people comment and tell me that that was a helpful exercise for them is to think about that word that you just used, um, to think about losses and gains. Um, it's actually a word and maybe Mike, you've done some of this too with missionaries. Um, it's something that's used in missionary debriefing it's something even that comes from the world of personal coaching, but it's this idea of losses and gains. And to think about with anything, transitions, um, different stages of life, but to go through and to look at honestly, okay, what are the losses that have come because of this? But also, what are the gains that have come because of this? Because with anything, there are both. And it's good to acknowledge that, not to sweep the losses under the rug and pretend like they don't, they don't exist because that's not healthy, <laughs> um, but to also acknowledge the gains because even in painful moments or even in moments of transition, we usually can find really bright things, really positive things. And if we can acknowledge them, that can be a really good, healthy thing too. And so I would say that in this really long, elongated, strange pandemic season that we are in, that gains and losses exercise can be really helpful. Thank you, Jessica Sherman. Thank you for your time and yeah. always good to see you. For all of you who've tuned in today, we hope it's been a blessing. I know we get lots of comments and there's been just literally times, hundreds of you that are watching and Maybe today there's a parent here that is just wrestling with feeling a loss of your child at school, or you've heard about that child processing those losses. Go to our website, listen to Jessica. She's got some great words. We're gonna highlight her blog as well um, and doing this whole process about the losses, but there are gains because we are people of faith and God is still on his throne. So from all of us here at GMPI, from Jessica over there at Ozark Christian College, we wish you a wonderful day. And until next time, we hope if you've blessed, been blessed by this, you'll listen to it on your social media and share it with others and on our podcast as well. And next time, stay tuned for another edition of Faith Greater Than Fear. God bless you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.